हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर शीतल शिरोडकर आई एम वर्किंग एज अ असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन एमिटी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ बायोटेक्नोलॉजी एमिटी यूनिवर्सिटी नोएडा टूडे आई बी प्रेजेंटिंग अ लेक्चर फ्रॉम द पेपर मोलिकुलर बायोलॉजी जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग एंड बायोटेक्नोलॉजी ऑन द टॉपिक यू कैरियोटिक ट्रांसक्रिप्शन the objectives of the lecture will be to understand and have an overview of eukaryotic transcriptional regulation explain about different types of rna polymerases and their role understanding the mechanism of transcription by rna polymerase 2 understanding the mechanism and types of post transcriptional modifications coming to the concept map eukaryotic transcription process is highly regulated and involves role of several regulatory proteins and sequences the transcription process can be divided into three main stages initiation elongation and termination during the post transcriptional modifications the maturation and processing of mrna rrna and trna molecules takes place introduction gene expression involves production of an rna molecule making use of dna as a template the process of transfer of information from dna to rna is known as transcription rna differs from dna in containing base uracil instead of thymine and presence of a hydroxyl group instead of hydrogen at the 2 prime end of the pentose sugar rna is however single stranded structure and can fold back on themselves generating structural diversity rna is a macromolecular structure with varied functions including storage and transmission of information and catalysis transcription is a process of transfer of information from a double stranded dna molecule into a single stranded rna molecule by making use of enzyme system for the conversion in general there are three major kinds of rnas messenger rna which acts as a template or source of information for protein synthesis process transfer rnas which acts as carriers of amino acids during protein synthesis transfer rnas read the information in the messenger rna and transfer the appropriate amino acid during protein synthesis ribosomal rna are involved in formation of ribosomes which are the protein synthesizing machinery other additional specialized rnas have regulatory and catalytic functions in dna replication process the entire chromosome or the genome of the organism is replicated and two copies of dna are synthesized however transcription process is selective expression of particular genes or group of genes depending on the requirement of a particular cell this expression is highly regulated process involving activity of several proteins enzymes and regulatory sequences the specific regulatory sequences mark the fragment of dna to be transcribed as well as which strand to be used as a template in the following section we will discuss about eukaryotic transcription and its steps in details eukaryotic rna polymerases figure 1 dna dependent rna polymerase requires dna as a template for ribonucleoside 5 prime triphosphates atp gtp ctp and utp as building blocks of rna and mg2+ as a cofactor the e coli rna polymerase holoenzyme consists of RNA polymerase core enzymes plus a sigma factor which carry out the four steps of prokaryotic transcription process which includes 
template binding, initiation, elongation and termination. Eukaryotes on the contrary have three different RNA polymerases specialized for transcription of different types of RNA molecules. Eukaryotic genomes are larger in the range of approximately 10 to the power 9 base pairs. Large genomes means large number of genes and hence require more specificity for amplification. Additionally, eukaryotic cells have diversity of functions, organelles and specialized cell types which also require specificity of gene expression. Hence, eukaryotes have different RNA polymerases specialized for transcription of different types of RNA molecules. There are three different types of RNA polymerases present in eukaryotes. RNA polymerase 1 functions for synthesis of pre-ribosomal RNA containing 18S, 5.8S and 28S rRNA. RNA polymerase 2 is involved in synthesis of messenger RNA. It is capable of recognizing several promoters that differ in their sequence. Many polymerase 2 recognized promoters have few common sequences like the Tata box located at minus 30 position and the INR sequence at the RNA start site. RNA polymerase 3 is responsible for synthesizing transfer RNA, 5SR RNA and other small RNAs. Some of the promoter sequences recognized by RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase 2 has been extensively studied and is the most important with reference to gene expression. RNA polymerase 2 is a multimeric protein made up of 12 different subunits. RBP1 is its largest subunit and is homologous to the beta prime subunit of bacterial RNA polymerase. The RBP2 subunit is homologous to the bacterial RNA polymerase beta subunit while the RBP3 and RBP11 are homologous to the bacterial RNA polymerase alpha subunits. The largest subunit RBP1 of polymerase 2 has a long C terminal tail made up of multiple repeats of 7 amino acid sequence which reads YSPTSPS. The C terminal domain can become highly phosphorylated at its serine and threonine residues. During different stages of transcription, the C terminal domain of RBP1 is cycled between phosphorylated and dephosphorylated forms. The C-terminal domain is also involved in recruitment of proteins required for 5' prime capping and 3' prime polyadenylation reaction of messenger RNA. The RNA polymerase 2 requires interaction with several transcription factors in order to initiate eukaryotic transcription process. Eukaryotic promoters extend from transcriptional start site to approximately 200 base pairs upstream. It contains several short sequences of approximately 10 base pair in length. The core promoter contains a Tata box which reads in sequence TATAAA which is bound by the Tata binding protein that functions in formation of the RNA polymerase transcriptional complex. The Tata box is present approximately 25 base pairs upstream of the transcriptional start site and an INR sequence is present at the RNA polymerase start site. Several proximal promoter elements approximately 70 to 200 base pairs towards the 5' prime end of the transcription start site are also present. These includes CAD box and GC box which are binding site for the CAD binding protein and transcriptional factor SP1 respectively. These different sequences can be mixed and matched to give a functional promoter. Promoter elements recognized by RNA polymerase 1 
are not well conserved in sequence from one species to another. However, they have a AT rich initiator conserved sequence surrounding the transcriptional start site. The RNA polymerase 3 sequence promoters are of two types. The classical RNA polymerase 3 gene promoters are present completely within the gene, for example, the transfer RNA and the 5SR RNA genes. The non classical RNA polymerase 3 gene promoters, like the SNRNA, resemble the POL2 gene promoters consisting of the upstream promoter elements and the Tata box upstream of the transcriptional start site. Enhancers Enhancers are sequences approximately 500 base pairs in length and contain binding sites for several different transcriptional factors. They are about 700 to 1000 base pairs away from the transcription start site. They contain several closely arranged sequence elements that bind transcription factors. Enhancer increases gene promoter activity in all tissues or brings about regulated gene expression in a tissue specific or a developmental stage specific manner. Similar elements that repress gene activity are known as silencers. Enhancers can be present either downstream, upstream or within the gene sequence to be transcribed. DNA may be coiled, bent or rearranged such that the transcriptional factors bound at the promoter and the enhancer elements interact to produce a large protein complex. Steps of eukaryotic transcription process We will discuss about the eukaryotic transcription process in the following three phases. First, the assembly of RNA polymerase and the transcription factors at a promoter. Second, the RNA strand initiation and promoter clearance. And third, elongation, termination and release. The assembly of RNA polymerase and transcriptional factors at promoter begins by formation of a closed complex which begins with the binding of Tata binding protein to the Tata box and 8 to 10 Tata binding protein associated factors. The Tata binding protein is universal transcriptional factor required by all three classes of RNA polymerases. The Tata binding protein is further bound by transcriptional factor 2B which also binds with DNA on either side of the Tata binding protein. It acts as an intermediate in the recruitment of RNA polymerase 2 and influences selection of transcription start site. The transcriptional factor 2A at this stage stabilizes the transcriptional factor 2B and the Tata binding protein complex on the DNA. The Tata binding protein 2B and the Tata binding protein complex is then associated with another complex consisting of transcriptional factor 2F and polymerase 2. Transcriptional factor 2F here recruits RNA polymerase 2 and targets it to its promoter via interaction with transcriptional factor 2B and reducing non-specific binding of RNA polymerase 2. Finally, transcriptional factor 2E and transcriptional factor 2H bind leading to formation of an open complex. Transcriptional factor 2E here acts in recruitment of transcriptional factor 2H and modulates its activities. Transcriptional factor 2H has an helicase activity which is responsible for the transition from closed to open promoter complex. RNA strand initiation and promoter clearance. Additional functions of transcriptional factor 2H is required during the initiation phase. 
it has kinase activity in one of its subunits that brings about phosphorylation of polymerase 2 at many places in its C terminal domain. Additional protein kinase CDK9 which is a part of transcription elongation complex PTEFB also brings about phosphorylation of the C terminal domain. Phosphorylation events at the C terminal domain of RNA polymerase 2 largest subunit leads to conformational change in the overall structure of the complex initiating transcription. Phosphorylation of the C terminal domain is important not only during the subsequent elongation phase but it also affects the interactions between the transcription complex and other enzymes involved in post transcriptional processing of the transcript. While the initial 60 to 70 nucleotides of RNA are being synthesized, the transcriptional factor 2E followed by the transcriptional factor 2H is released and the polymerase 2 continues to enter into the elongation step of transcription. Elongation, termination and release. Transcriptional factor 2F is associated with polymerase 2 throughout the elongation phase. During this step, the RNA polymerase 2 C terminal domain is maintained in the phosphorylated state by coordinated action of several proteins called as elongation factors. The elongation factors prevent pausing of the transcription process and are also involved in the interaction with protein complexes that mediate post transcriptional processing of messenger RNA. After synthesis of the RNA molecule, the process is terminated and polymerase 2 is dephosphorylated and recycled to initiate another transcription cycle. Thus, to summarize the entire process of eukaryotic transcription by RNA polymerase 2, during initiation there is sequential assembly of Tata binding protein often with transcriptional factor 2A and other transcriptional factors transcriptional factor 2B, transcriptional factor 2F polymerase 2 complex, transcriptional factor 2E and transcriptional factor 2H that results in formation of a closed complex. Data binding protein often binds as a part of a large complex with transcriptional factor 2D. Some of the transcriptional factor 2D subunits play a role in transcriptional regulation. Within the complex, the DNA is unwound at the INR region by the helicase activity of transcriptional factor 2H and perhaps transcriptional factor 2E creating an open complex. The carboxy terminal domain of the largest polymerase 2 subunit is phosphorylated by transcriptional factor 2H and the polymerase then escapes the promoter and begins transcription. Elongation. Elongation is accomplished by the release of many transcriptional factors and is also enhanced by the elongation factors. After termination, polymerase 2 is released, dephosphorylated and recycled. Transcription termination by the RNA polymerase 1 involves role of the Reb1P protein. When the Reb 1P binding site in the DNA was experimentally replaced with E. coli lac repressor binding site, the lac repressor protein induced termination in an in vitro transcription reaction. This suggests that transcription termination by RNA polymerase 1 requires binding sites for the Reb1P protein which causes pausing of transcription by RNA polymerase 1 and the process terminates. Transcription termination by RNA polymerase 2. There is no discrete or a clear terminator of transcription by RNA polymerase 2. The 3 prime end of the messenger RNA molecule is made by cleavage and polyadenylation. 
However, depending on the RNA, three prime end processing signals and the termination factors present at the end of the gene, there are at least two base there are at least two best known pathways for transcription termination. This includes the poly A dependent pathway and the SEN1 dependent pathway. We will be discussing about these in the following slides. Figure 9 Poly A dependent termination Transcription termination by DNA polymerase 2 is coupled with messenger RNA maturation at the 3 prime end of the messenger RNA molecule including cleavage and polyadenylation. The RNA polymerase 2 RBP1 subunits extended carboxy terminal domain has important features for recruit has important features for recruitment of polymerase 2 termination factors. The polymerase 2 C terminal domain consists of tandem heptad repeats which are made up primarily of amino acid consensus sequence tyrosine, serine, proline, threonine, serine, proline and serine. These sequences are modified during post translational changes by phosphorylation. Changes in phosphorylation patterns of this C terminal domain alters the affinity of the C terminal domain binding protein thus regulating POL2 function. The POL2 C terminal domain and RNA is bound by several processing factors that could act as shearing force to separate the DNA RNA hybrid. The binding of the processing factors also causes pausing of polymerase 2. Recruitment of cleavage and polyadenylation factors coincides with pausing of polymerase 2. Poly A dependent termination. During poly A dependent termination in humans, cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factors bind to the human polymerase 2 and recognize the AAU AAA signal sequence that emerges in the nascent transcript. Cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factor binding to this site induces pausing of the polymerase 2. As the GU rich binding site is synthesized, it is bound by cleavage stimulatory factor that dislodges cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factor. Following cleavage at the poly A site, the 5 prime to 3 prime exoribonuclease XRN2 degrades the downstream RNA product leading to displacement of polymerase 2. SEN1 dependent termination. It is an alternative pathway for most non-coding RNAs. The 3 prime end of yeast SN RNAs and the SNO RNAs are generated by endoribonucleolytic trimming by the nuclear exosome tramp complex and do not possess a poly A tail in their mature form. A distinct set of core factors is required for recognition and transduction of the transcription termination signals including the RNA binding protein NRD1, nuclear polyadenylated RNA binding protein 3, NAP3 and the putative RNA and the DNA helicase SEN1. In this pathway, SEN1 is proposed to terminate transcription by polymerase 2 by unwinding the RNA-DNA hybrid in the active site. Transcription termination by RNA polymerase 3 does not require any protein factors. A stretch of thymine residues followed by a self-complementary sequence transcription leads to formation of an unstable complex that disrupts the RNA-DNA hybrid and the transcription terminates. Post-transcriptional modifications. Three types of RNA molecules 
which include messenger RNA, transfer RNA and ribosomal RNA are synthesized during transcription process. These molecules undergo post transcriptional changes before attaining its final functional form. The post transcriptional modifications are described in the following section. Polyadenylation Polyadenylation is addition of 80 to 250 adenine residues at the 3 prime end of the messenger RNA molecule. It serves as a binding site for specific proteins that help protect messenger RNA from enzymatic degradation. Mechanism of polyadenylation The messenger RNA is synthesized beyond the polyadenylation site and is later cleaved by an endonuclease at the polyadenylation site which is marked by a sequence AAU AAA in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. This is present 10 to 30 nucleotides upstream of the cleavage site. Endonuclease activity generates a free 3 prime hydroxyl group at the end of the messenger RNA molecule to which a string of adenine residues are added in a reaction catalyzed by enzyme polyadenylate polymerase thus generating a tail of about 80 to 250 residues long. At the 5 prime end of the eukaryotic messenger RNA molecules is present a 7 methyl guanosine residue linked to the 5 prime end of the messenger RNA by an 5 prime 5 prime triphosphate linkage representing a cap. It protects the messenger RNA from ribonuclease degradation from the 5 prime end of the messenger RNA and also functions to bind the cap binding complex that transports the messenger RNA across the nuclear membrane to the cytosol. The cap binding complex further contributes in binding of the messenger RNA to ribosomes to initiate translation. Mechanism of 5 prime capping. The 5 prime cap is formed by condensation of a molecule of GTP with the 5 prime end of the messenger RNA molecule. The guanine is then methylated at the N7 position by using S adenosyl methionine as a methyl group donor. The capping reactions begin as soon as the first 20 to 30 nucleotides of the messenger RNA transcript are synthesized by the capping enzymes. Once the cap is synthesized, the messenger RNA molecule is released and further bound by cap binding complex. Post transcriptional modification in ribosomal RNA. Figure 14. The ribosomal RNA molecule are synthesized as longer precursors known as pre-ribosomal RNAs which in case of eukaryotes is 45S transcript made by the eukaryotic RNA polymerase 1. The 45S precursor is methylated at several nucleotides mostly on the 2 prime hydroxyl group of the ribose sugars. The precursor ribosomal RNA is then cleaved by a series of enzymatic reactions in the nucleolus to generate the mature 18S, 28S and the 5.8S ribosomal RNAs of eukaryotic ribosomes. The 5SR RNA of eukaryotes is made as a separate transcript by RNA polymerase 3. Eukaryotic ribosomes Figure 15. The ribosomal RNA molecules associate with proteins to form the functional ATS eukaryotic ribosome. The mature eukaryotic ribosome has a sedimentation coefficient of ATS. It consists of two subunits, the larger 60S and the smaller 40S. The larger 60S subunit is made up of 28S 5.8S and 5SR RNA 
and 49 different proteins. While the 40S ribosomal subunit is made up of 18S rRNA and 33 proteins. Transfer RNA processing. Figure 16. Most eukaryotic cells have 40 to 50 different transfer RNA molecules and several copies of many of the transfer RNA genes. Transfer RNA molecules are as well synthesized as longer precursors which are enzymatically processed to the final mature transfer RNA molecule. Several nucleotides are removed from the 5' prime and the 3' prime end of the transfer RNA precursor by the endonuclease RNAs P and the exonuclease RNAs D respectively. Few eukaryotic transfer RNA precursors also contain intron sequences which are not present in the final structure. Further post transcriptional processing may include addition of a 5 prime to 3 prime CAA residue to the 3 prime end of the RNAs D cleaved transfer RNA molecule in a reaction catalyzed by transfer RNA nucleotidyl transferase. The enzyme binds to the 3 ribonucleoside triphosphate precursor in separate active sites and forms phosphodiester bonds leading to generation of CCA sequence in 5 prime to 3 prime direction which is attached to the 3 prime end of the mature transfer RNA molecule. Splicing The eukaryotic precursor messenger RNA molecule contains both introns and exon sequences. Of these, intron sequences are removed and the exons are spliced together during the post transcriptional modification. Thus, the introns are not present in the mature messenger RNA molecules. There are in general four different types of introns based on the splicing mechanism. Group 1 introns, group 2 introns, spliceosomal introns and the fourth class of introns. Transesterification reaction figure 17. The splicing reaction of group 1 and group 2 introns involves two transesterification steps. During this a 2 prime or a 3 prime hydroxyl group of the ribose sugar of the RNA acts as a nucleophile and attacks on a phosphorus of the phosphodiester bond at the exon intron junction making a new phosphodiester bond. Figure 18 Group 1 introns Group 1 introns are found in messenger RNA, ribosomal RNAs and transfer RNAs of some nuclear, mitochondrial and chloroplast genes. In group 1 splicing reaction, the 3 prime hydroxyl group of a guanosine nucleotide or nucleoside cofactor makes a nucleophilic attack on the phosphate of the phosphodiester bond at the exon intron junction forming a new phosphodiester bond with the 5 prime end of the intron. The 3 prime hydroxyl group of the displaced exon now similarly attacks the 3 prime end of the intron resulting in removal of introns and splicing of the exons together. Group 2 introns Figure 19 Group 2 introns are generally found in DNA of algal, fungal and plant organelles like mitochondria and chloroplast. The group 2 intron splicing mechanism is similar to the group 1 reaction. However, the 2 prime hydroxyl group of adenine residue which resides within the intron sequence acts as a nucleophile during the first step. In both group 1 and group 2 splicing reactions, no external ATP energy is invested for splicing. Formation of new phosphodiester bond utilizes the energy released during cleavage of previous phosphodiester bond and hence the energy balance is maintained. Spliceosomal introns Figure 20 This class of introns is found in eukaryotic nuclear pre-messenger RNA. They are named so 
because their removal involves a large protein complex called spliceosome. It is made up of RNA and the protein complexes together known as small nuclear ribonucleoproteins. Each SNRNP consists of a small nuclear RNA about 100 to 200 nucleotides in length complexed with protein molecules. Five different SNRNAs U1, U2, U4, U5 and U6 are involved in the splicing reaction. Spliceosomal introns contain a dinucleotide sequence GU at the 5 prime splice site and AG at the 3 prime splice site. The U1 SNRNA has a sequence complementarity to the 5 prime splice site of the intron while the U2 SNRNA has sequence complementarity to the internal sequence of the intron containing an adenine residue. Binding of U1 SNRNPs actually help define the 5 prime splice site. The U1 SNRNP binds at the 5 prime splice site following which the remaining SNRNPs U2, U4, U5 and U6 are added leading to formation of a functional spliceosomal complex consisting of 5 SNRNA and 50 proteins. Formation of active spliceosome complex requires ATP energy for its assembly. Binding of the U2 SNRNP brings about activation of internal adenine residue whose 2 prime hydroxyl group will make a nucleophilic attack at the 5 prime splice site leading to formation of a lariate like intermediate structure and formation of a free hydroxyl group at the end of the 5 prime splice site. This hydroxyl group now attacks the 3 prime splice site completing the reaction. Fourth class of introns. The fourth class of introns is found in certain transfer RNA molecules. It requires activity of enzyme endonuclease and energy from ATP hydrolysis. The endonuclease cleaves the phosphodiester bond at either ends of the introns and the two exons are spliced together by formation of a new phosphodiester bond. Summary Thus, in this lecture, we have learnt about eukaryotic promoter elements and regulatory sequences, types of RNA polymerases, steps in eukaryotic transcription process and different types of post-transcriptional modifications in eukaryotes. Thank you. You can also find this lecture on the UGC ePartshala website.